Yeah. So, uh, Don, one of the things that, that we've done in the past, we talked about minerals, we talked about work energy, we talked about energy. Uh, and I think what you really wanted me to focus on this time was about, you know, the tax benefits, tax advantages of investing directly in energy. I think that's where you wanted me to go with this. And without getting it too complicated or, or too uh, convoluted, um, I can give it to them in a nutshell. And, and quite frankly, I'll try to keep it from being unbiased because, you know, obviously I've done this for 40 years, so I have a tendency to like what I do. I appreciate the taxes and I more importantly appreciate the income and the actual growth and asset value that I get from it. But if you want, I'll get cranking on this. We'll leave some time at the end for questions, if that's okay. Let's do that. We'll be in the background if you need anything. And and did you want to leave questions till the end? Is um, that easier? No, you can jump in anytime you want. You know, I'm, I'm like a computer. I've been doing this 40 years. You can talk to me in a tornado. I can still hold my own. So whenever you feel the necessity, go for it. Okay. So students, if you have questions about what he's talking about, you go ahead and put that in the Q&A screen and then we'll be in the background and we'll be here for you, bud. All right. Thank you. Well, let me get started. First off, let me introduce myself. I'm Troy Eckert. I am the chairman of the board of Eckert Enterprises. Um, I've been involved in oil and gas uh, direct ownership with high net worth investors and accredited investors since 1985. I know most of you weren't even born in the 1990s. I'm just kind of being facetious. But reality is, wow, 40 years has really come and gone. But the one thing that has stayed consistent, the one thing that has stayed consistent in oil and gas in 1986, Congress passed the Tax Reform Act. And that Tax Reform Act said, look, the United States is running out of oil and gas. We've got, to, we've got to figure out how to get domestic exploration to take place. So what we're going to do is we're going to make it a specific asset that gives a big financial reward for tax deductions and tax-free income. If we can get high income earners to look at oil and gas as a way to invest, receive those tax benefits, and then if you're successful in drilling, you also make a great deal of income. Now, this has been around since 1986. The problem is, for over 40 years, Oil and gas drilling has been very, very difficult. I mean, you're talking about a lot of dry holes. You're talking about a lot of uh, failures. And what you're, what you're really having to do is, is get your head around the idea. Today's oil and gas industry is not like it was 10 years ago, 20, 30, 40 years ago. Today, it is more about not dry holes or bad wells. It's more about economic returns. Your number one risk in investing in oil and gas domestic exploration, where the tax write-offs are, is you have a bad sponsor. You have a crook, a liar, an incompetent person. They've marked it up four times the price. So really your number one risk these days is not a dry hole. It's not the oil company is going to drill a bad well per se. It's really the person offering an investment is really not qualified or they have ill intent from the beginning. But let's talk about the Tax Reform Act, all right? First and foremost, when you participate in domestic exploration, you are getting the opportunity to drill a well or a series of wells, whether it be a one well, multi-well package, it doesn't matter, just whatever wells are drilled. The IRS has classified certain components of that drilling activity as being what they call intangible. In some aspects are called tangible. Makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Well, let's talk about that. What's intangible when you drill? Things like consulting fees. The actual drilling itself, drilling the well, there's no residual value. Once I poke a 12 inch hole in the ground, seven and a half inch hole in the ground, I drill one, two, three miles in the ground. There's nothing residual about that. So it's deductible because it's an intangible. So when you look at a line item cost to drill a well, you as an investor, a participating partner in that well, you will be looking at the intangible components of that, that cost of drilling as being deductible one of two ways. You can deduct it the year in which you make the investment. That's called an accelerated a process or accelerated path. So if I drilled a million dollars in a well this year and 70% of the drilling cost was intangible, I could accelerate that and deduct all of those costs this year in 2024. That comes right off my gross income. So I take a million, I invest it, 70% is intangibles. I take that 700,000, I look at my income, my income is 3 million. I reduce that gross income from 3 million down to 2.3 million because I got a $700,000 gross write-off. Now, let me stress this very clearly for those of you that are, that are watching and paying attention. Here's drilling a good well. <clears throat> Here's drilling a well that's not good. Dry hole, scam artist, Ponzi scheme, incompetent. The tax write-offs are the same. I get the same tax write-offs, the same deductions, the same intangibles, the same tangibles, whether I have a good well or a bad well. 
So if I could take the intangibles as a deduction this year, what about the other 30%? Well, the other 30% is normally um, going to be capitalized over a five-year period, or it's going to be depleted over seven years because that's going to be the leasehold cost. Uh, you're going to have equipment, the wellhead, the pipe, the catwalk, the tanks on location. So about 30% is either leasehold cost and or the tangible, those physical aspects of that well. So just like you depreciate equipment, just like you depreciate real estate, the IRS came up with a formula and said, hey, look, we're going to split this, you know, basically based on intangible and intangibles. Within that, the one thing that's really changed is that you normally would look at maybe a four, six, seven year kind of cash on cash payout back 10 or 15 years ago when you drilled vertical wells. But you also had to factor that probably 40, 50 percent of what you drilled was not going to work. They get down, look at it and say, that, hey, the geologist was close, but nothing worked out. If you drilled a dry hole back in the in the vertical drilling days when they drill straight down in the ground and you know kind of hopefully hit the uh, bullseye, um, you'd write 100% off, so you get 100% of your investment, but you made no money, right? That's not what we want to do. We want to we want to defer the taxes we owe, not pay them this year, put that IRS dollar to work in drilling domestic oil wells, get those tax write-offs, and then we want that well to make us money. And we want that well to be economically sound. And we want to be with a good operator and a good sponsor that says, hey, I've been doing this. I have a track record. I can demonstrate we can save you taxes and make you money. I'll let you in on a little side note. One of the reasons why Congress, the IRS, and those that don't like fossil fuel wanted to get rid of the individual intangible deductions and write-offs for oil and gas wells is when the 1986 Tax Reform Act was put in place, we were doing a lot of dry holes. So they said, oh, okay, you high net, net worth, high income earners, you're taking a big risk. You're at the big boy table in Vegas, and we're going to give you a lot of tax benefits because we know you're going to lose your tail four, five, six out of eight times. You know, it was, it was basically- hey, Charlie, Yep, yep. Your slides, your slides aren't advancing. We're still on your uh, intro page. Yeah, I know that. Okay, just making sure. Gotcha. Yeah, no, yeah, I knew that. I hadn't touched it yet, but I was kind of setting it up because the slides are kind of fall in place with what I'm saying. So again, apologize. I should have said that at the beginning. No, no worries. Just making sure. You're good. Thank you. Yep, yep, absolutely. So one of the things I wanted to say before we move on the slides is the following, that when you think about participating in oil and gas and working here, big tax benefits, but I want you to focus on the money. And as I go through the slides, I'm going to demonstrate to you how you can get those write-offs, but you can also be successful because today... It's about 99% of horizontal wells that are being drilled these days are successful. They make money. They make a lot of money. So Congress looked at it and said, hey, we've been giving you guys write-offs to take the risk, but your risk is really gone. Maybe we shouldn't give you those tax write-offs anymore. Unfortunately, that's not going to be the case because about 20% of all drilling in the U.S. is done by individuals like you and me. And we'll stop drilling if they don't give us the tax write-offs, not because we don't like making money, but the tax write-offs are kind of like ringing the dinner bell to, to sharks. You know, it says, hey, you guys with high income, this is a great asset class to chase, okay? Let's see if I can advance this bad boy. I'm dealing off my laptop, so I hope I don't crash it. Here we go. <laughs> Did it advance for you guys? Looks great, thank you. Yeah, trust me, I haven't been drinking alcohol. I don't drink anymore, so I'm, I'm good to go. Um, all right, so the key points to remember are, look, right now we have a president-elect who clearly is going to disengage from green energy, disengage for subsidies for wind and solar and push everybody back to fossil fuels for all the various reasons, right? So we have a really big shift in policy. What does that mean? Well, his mantra is drill, baby, drill. Well, what that means is he's going to get bigger tax incentives than normal, which is what he did in 2017, bonus depreciation. From 2017 to about 2021, we got to write off 100% of every dollar we spent in domestic drilling. So it was the most, in my view, the most advantageous tax tool that we had out there. So you complement 100% write-off with virtually a 99% success rate. Wow, what a tool we had during that Trump administration and carried over into the Biden administration. Now, the other thing that's happening is the scarcity of it. Okay, this makes it even a much more valuable asset because when you have Exxon buying out Pioneer and you have ConocoPhillips buying out so-and-so and Marathon is now gone, no longer to be, when you have this merger taking place, the opportunity for small investors, high net worth investors like you and me to buy into and invest in drilling is getting very difficult. Why? These multi, multi-billion dollar companies, they're picking up every interest they can get. They're keeping it. They're buying out small pieces. It is getting I mean, we're fist fighting for breadcrumbs on the ground, but there's still a lot of breadcrumbs to be had. The other side is the barrier to entry. So it's difficult to get into work and interest 
because a lot of these smaller promoters will say, hey, we've got this drilling deal. But think about it. If you've got this enormous industry and these massive multi-billion dollar companies and they're buying leases and they control the pipelines and refineries, the only player that can get into these working interest is going to be in stuff that is probably C minus or D minus kind of opportunities. Well, Eckerd has figured out a way that we get in the A plus opportunities and we've been doing it for the last seven years. So the barrier to entry is difficult, difficult for multiple reasons, but mainly just because you got to be able to deploy a plan that puts you in, in tier one assets, tier one drilling opportunities, and then be able to deliver that to your investing partners, right? Now, the thing about it is real estate is what this is. This is working interest, which is what they define. If you buy working interest, that means you're drilling and participating in the well. Your money is working capital, right? That's why you get the deduction. It's going to offer you decades and decades of monthly distributions because why? Every month they sell the only gas. They give us a check. We get income. We only pay taxes on 85% of the income. We get 15% tax-free. Any reworks, any kind of maintenance on the wells, like any other real estate asset, we get to deduct that as cost and expenses. We get to have monthly cash flow, which accelerates our return. And these economic well lives are projected for like 20 to 50 plus years. So not only do I get great tax incentives the year I invest, I get ongoing tax benefits. 15% of my income is not taxed, but I get literally dozens and dozens of years worth of cash flow that gives it to me at only 85% tax liability, all right? So just to make sure you're clear, the oil and gas industry is broken into three sectors, just like real estate. You got raw land developers, you got vertical developers, and then you basically have REITs or, or those who want to buy mature properties. Oil and gas, there's upstream, which is the drilling and the exploration and the production. Midstream is the collection of that raw production in the field, moving it through pipelines, refining it, trucks, pipelines, et cetera. And then downstream is where it goes into the refineries, finally it's processed, and then we see it in plastics and everything in the room behind me, right? Eckerd focuses only on upstream and midstream. So I just want to make sure that's clear. I want to explain what working interest is. So working interest is a contractual ownership in an oil and gas well. So let's just use the well in front of you, right? That well might cost $10 million. The main oil company, who's going to be the general contractor, they might have 80% ownership. But more than likely, there are other parties who are able to acquire the rights in the lease, the mineral right lease, to participate when that well was proposed. So the big boy offers, hey, here's a well we're going to drill for $10 million. We're going to pay $8 million. We own 80%. There's $2 million left. A company like Eckerd goes out and looks for those smaller interest positions in the wells with some of these premium operators. And the reason we want to do that is we get to participate on all the intellectual value they have. They have some of the highest quality engineers, geophysicists, geologists, finance, production individuals. In other words, by participating with the majors, we get the free benefit of some of the smartest people in oil and gas in the world on top of their trading, their banking, their negotiating, their midstream. We get to participate, kind of like riding on the back of a bull elephant. We get to take the benefit of that ride. We still get all those tax write-offs. We still get that tax-free income. But what we get to do is participate in wells that really no individual investors in the country get to participate in. It's very, very difficult, if not impossible. All right? Now, when we think about the role we play from a tax perspective and from an ownership perspective, the way Ecker does our business, we don't put you in an LLC. We do not put you in some kind of special purpose vehicle. We offer direct ownership. You own it. It's your piece of the pie. Let's say we took 20% of the well I just described, and we said we have 20 people participating, 1% each, and we're all going to split up the $2 million cost. Well, that's your interest. You'll own it through a purchase sale agreement. You're going to get the benefit of your allocated share of investment. So, out of the $10 million, I took 1 20th or $200,000. I'm going to get a deduction this year. We look at the overall budget. We look at the overall well cost and 70% or $7 million of the $10 million well was deductible as intangibles. And maybe one fifth of the remaining 3 million is going to be depreciated or amortized uh, year one. So it's going to average 75 to 85%. Now here's the fun part. Mineral owners and those who have an override Pay no cost, no expenses, no capital exposure, no liability. We, as participants in drilling, we own 100% of the drilling rights, but we only get 75% of the revenue. Those mineral owners, those royalty owners, they're going to get the other 25% because it's technically all their oil and gas. We simply leased it from them with the opportunity to go drill the wells and retain 75% in this example I'm giving you, okay? 
So what that means is because we take the risk, because we pay the bills, we get 75% of the revenue, it means that we're getting the lion's share of the income. Now, trust me, the wells we drill today, even compared to two or three years ago, are, are wells that are 25, 50% better than they were three years ago because of technology. Artificial intelligence, uh, the expertise, the application of what these oil companies are doing is literally night and day different from two, four, eight, 10 years ago. We were an oil and gas industry running out of oil. America was paying $145 a barrel in 2008. And guess what? We were drilling as fast as we could. Our results were maybe 40% success. Um, I know somebody's raised their hand. I don't know how to answer the hand. So Don, y'all have to help me on that. And there's, there's more questions. You can jump in and shut me up because I can go for days and days on one breath. All right. Um, I'll do this slide and then I'll take a breath and let you guys ask any questions, right? So look, it's pretty simple math. For every $100,000 of my income that I want to invest in 2024, 70 to 85% is going to be tax deductible year one. If I don't need all the taxes, I can spread it out over five years. If I don't need the losses this year, I can carry them forward. But getting those tax deductions gives me the, the fluidity and the decision making with my tax professional to decide how I want to use it. Current year, spread over five, allocated next year. Those are some decisions you and your tax professional can work out. But the way I view it from Troy's simple mind, for every $100,000 I put in oil and gas, I'm going to save $37,000 in taxes. That just means to me, that well, those wells that I participate in, they got to make back 63% of my investment for me to be whole. Key point, the major oil and gas, gas companies that drill the well that own that 80% I described, they don't get tax benefits. It's only allowed for individual, non-traditional oil and gas guys. So individual high net worth investors, we get the tax write-offs, the oil company doesn't. Why is that important? If they've got to go drill a $10 million well and make their money back and make a profit, well, I'm playing the same game they are for 63% 63 of the risk and 63 cents on the dollar. That's also why working interest makes so much sense for high net worth investors and high income investors like you and I. Is there any questions I need to ask before I keep advancing? We have a couple, um, but I think that your presentation will address them. So let's Well, let's on. roll then. Thank you, Ariel. I appreciate it. See, all I got on my mind right now is turkey. So you guys are glad you got my attention. I had a cup of coffee. I'm ready to roll one breath. We're, we're going to rock it out of the house. So let's just talk about it. You don't have to become an engineer. You don't have to become a geologist. You don't have to read 10,000 books. It's a very simple game. If you find an experienced, transparent, ethical, and honest sponsor then that sponsor is going to do all the back office work. So when Eckerd offers an investment in um, drilling, work and interest, right? You will participate for the dollar amount you want. We'll execute a purchase sale agreement. It allows us to manage your money. The funds will come to us. We will put those funds to the operator unless we're operating and drilling our own wells. And you'll get a statement about 90 days later, which will show your credit. Hey, I put in $100,000. We start drilling the wells and every month, in the field, our operating team, our management, our engineers, they're calculating every day what that well cost. The fourth or fifth month out, it's going to say out of $100,000, we've already spent $35,000 on that well, and it just keeps eating up the credit. We finally finish the well, call it six months from the day you start. Now it's time to turn the well on, go complete it, frack it, and turn it online. But I want you to know that everything you see on the screen, all the payroll, the work, the invoices, everything that goes into it is handled by our team. We have 58 employees, engineers, geologists. We've got uh, landmen, accountants. We, we have the entire back office. We do that for you. So you get this great opportunity, get big tax write-offs, tax-free income, and you get Ecker to do all the work for you. Now, some of the reasons I point this out is many of the sponsors you invest with don't do this. They outsource it, third party. They don't have internal staff. Well, you're adding one more layer of cost, one more layer of risk. And quite frankly, how can you be in the oil and gas business and offer to investors if you truly don't know what you're doing or don't have the resources to manage the back office? OK, I'm going to give you a couple of examples. And examples are going to show you Johnny, the pretend Eckerd investor, what he invested in, what the results look like. And I'm going to use our own track record to show you what it looks like. So here we go. Johnny's a high income tax bracket. High income tax bracket, folks, is not two to three hundred thousand dollars. I'm not sure what the tax rate is today, but I think you got to be north of that $500,000 to $550,000 range before you get into that true 37% tax bracket, right? And that means, generally speaking, you're going to have a blended average. But let's just say everybody I'm talking to here has taxes north of 25%, and many of you listening probably have taxes like me north of 37%, and you're paying a ton of taxes every year. Like, I need tax deductions, but I need it with successful investment. So Johnny has 
got a high income. He needs help. He wants to buy work. And Johnny is putting $100,000 in Eckerd's portfolios, okay, for the last four or five years. He's in 22 projects, all right? Each project has a different maturity, meaning he invested some in 2019, 2020, 21. But we just did this to give you kind of a blended average where you're saying $100,000 in 22 different drilling opportunities. Well, how's he done? Well, let's take a look. All right, when I look at his returns, this is what it looks like with a 70% tax deduction. Now, why do I say 70%? Depending on the wells and the intangibles and the tangibles, it's always going to vary. So we're going to give you an example at 70 80 and 90 percent because from 2017 to 2021 it was a hundred percent i believe that when president trump takes the oath on january 20th he's going to go back to bonus depreciation he's going to take us right back to 100 percent tax deduction so we're looking at some really really strong tax deductions and tax savings while we're drilling 99 plus percent successful wells but in johnny's case he saves eighty three thousand one hundred forty six dollars right average return between cash on cash Okay, when he looks at adding the tax benefits, what he's saving in taxes, he's made $109,047 back, 109% average, right? And this is over about a three-year period. This is what we've been doing for the last six years for our investing partners. Now, one thing to keep in mind, and this is just an example of the different portfolios that we have, okay, even at a 70% deduction, on the left-hand side is the, is the age, the vintage of the portfolios. It's the name of the projects, shows the dollar amount, shows the 70% deduction. It says, here's how much you earned today. You can look to the right. The first couple of wells we did are not the best wells. We've got the, the number two well, Brownie. It'll never pay out. I just don't think it's going to work. It was an experimental well. It's been on there for six years. Not going to happen. Every other well we've drilled looks like it will not only make their money back, but makes very nice returns. And you can see that in the right-hand side. Now, bear in mind, almost all the wells we look at and we financially model, we do it based on cash on cash. We don't worry about the tax write-off. We're here to make you money. Your individual tax situation allows you to determine what that means to you by participating in drilling and what that tax saving is, because we all have different uh, tax planning and different tax situation, different income. But strictly from a cash on cash perspective, you can see on the right hand side, we got portfolios that made almost three times, 3.39% uh, return on their money, and they've done it in less than three and a half years. We've got some tremendous wells. They keep coming, we keep drilling them, and we keep making money. And that's key. When we add the tax benefits in, well, it gets a little bit better. So we say, okay, how do we do with tax benefits? How do we do with cash on cash? If I had an 80% deduction, I went 113%. What if I had it at a 90% deduction? I'm at 116%. All right. Now, here's what I want you to remember. When you look at investing in working interest, all right, this is like going to a, a medical doctor. And you say, well, how, how many surgeries have you done? Um, yeah, it's not really important. I mean, I, I'm a neurosurgeon. I'm going to go ahead and you know, take that tumor out of your head. Yeah, but I'd like to know how many you've done. Well, you know, have you seen the way the wind blows from the north? And if you'll notice that most sponsors, those people trying to sell you on the gas, whether it's a mom and pop small organization trying to raise a million or $2 million, whether it's a guy trying to raise $200 million, when you ask for their proof of success, they don't give it to you. Or if they give it to you and you truly look at the numbers, they're not successful. Their goal is to try to get you broken even, broke to break even using your tax benefits. I'm looking at cash on cash. I want you to put in $100,000, make back your $100,000, and hopefully make two to three times that. And the tax benefits are just icing on the cake for you. I believe we're in the oil and gas work and interest investment asset class to make money. And you can make a lot of money. It's income. It's cash flow. It's fast rates of return. And the tax benefits, that's just an extra freebie you get along with successful wells. So this is our track record, but I want to point out a couple of things. When you ask for that proof of concept, you're going to have to say, tell me the name of your programs. Give me the API number. Every well in the United States is given a social security number, driver's license number. It's called the API number. It's specifically unique to every well. Many people will tell you, oh, I can't tell you that. It's confidential information. No, it's not. It's on public record everywhere. You can't start a well, get a permit or an application without an API number. So first and foremost, if you want to sell me a, a well, what's the API number? Number two, give me the specific legal name of the well. Then tell me who's going to drill it. Who's the operator? Who's the general contractor that's going to go get all the bids, put it all together, drill the well, and operate it and do the back office? Who's in charge? Then I want to know the location of it. I want to know where it's at. I want to be able to see if I can find it on Google Maps or if I can research it in the courthouse. Because a lot of times, nine out of 10 times, these individuals will not tell you those details. Now, Don, I know this is about taxes, but this is really important. Because if you want to lose 100% of your money, don't ask these questions. 
go to the parking lot, set a million dollars on fire, and you now have a tax deduction because you lost all your money. We're teaching you that there is great tax advantages. There's bonus depreciation, hopefully coming back with Trump again. There is IDCs, which are intangible drilling costs that are deductible year one. There is tax-free income. There's depletion and amortization of those other costs. It is loaded with tax benefits. But all that aside, I want you to focus on making money. The second slide is another extraction of the columns in our report, our proof of success, which is, okay, what zone are we in? When did the well start drilling? When did the rig get released? We're building a template. We're trying to give you the transparency of understanding the timeline of the process so you understand. When I write a check today and they go drill a $10 million well, it takes about 12 months to get your first check. They got to drill it. They got to move a rig in. They got to frack it. They got to turn it on. They got to get revenue. They got to sell the oil and gas, get the check back, and we got to get it to you. It's about a 12-month process. But what two or three-story building can you go build for $10 million and receive revenue in 12 months? The answer is zero. It is one of the fastest rotation of capital deployment, immediate tax write-offs, and the fastest return on cash on cash of any investment I know of, all right? So we go through this, and this is what's key. We tell you what the previous month return is. We tell you what the year-to-date return is. We tell you return on investment. We tell you what return on, on funding is. We give you all those details. So if you summarize it, really, this is what you want to see, the track record, the details, and then how have you done, because how you've done most likely tells me how you're going to do for me when I decide to invest. Thanks again for the tax write-offs, but I'm here to make money. If that's true, I just look at the timeline. It took an average days from the time we spud, or spud means started the well, until we first started selling oil and gas, 167 days. 375 days from the time we spud until we got our first check to you, the investor. That's the timeline. Some are faster, some are slightly slower. Average return on investment is 83.55%. Average year to date this year return is 20.36%. Now, our model itself, the way we work it, cash on cash analysis, we'd like to make our money back in under 36 distributions. Now, what we've done to date is crush that. We beat it by a milestone. It's because we are very selective, we have a tight buy box, and we have 40 years, four decades of expertise in selecting the wells. So here's my summary. You're real estate investors. You're on the academy. You're looking very heartily at deciding if you want to add energy to your portfolio. You're a doctor, you're an engineer, you're a banker, you're a farmer. You're saying, I've got this income. I'd like to keep more of it to build my wealth. It's a zero sum game investing in the IRS. They don't give anything back. So what I'm going to tell you is when you see the horses, it stands for horsepower. When you see the pump jacks, they're called horses, right? And what I'm trying to do is give you the analogy that says the more of those pump jacks I own, the more proved reserves I own in the ground, each one of those an income generating source that generates me a check every single month in the last 20 to 50 years. And the more I drill, the more taxes I save, the more income I generate. And that income is 85% taxed and 15% tax free. I have been drilling wells since I was 20 years old. I have drilled thousands of wells. For me, the reality is I've been able to utilize work and interest to invest, save my taxes, build my wealth, and as the income comes from the wells, I can either continue to invest it by buying more work and interest, by deferring that taxes, and I consider it a tax deferral more than a deduction. I'm just deferring the taxes while I'm building my wealth and creating thousands of wells that provide me income every 30 days. That is the perfect plan for working interest. All right, I'm going to take you open the floor for uh, questions at this point. And again, I'm sorry if I go too fast. I assume you can hear 300 words a minute. My job is to make sure you don't lose any time or value. And I think I'm supposed to give you the last slide that shows you the uh, barcode. Uh, Don or Ariel, I don't know who's going to read the questions for me, but if you guys can do it, that'd be great. Sure, I can do that. <clears throat> okay. Why are most oil and gas investments only designated for accredited investors? Why did the sponsors eliminate non-accredited investors from their audience? Well, I'm going to be politically correct, but politically wrong at the same time. <laughs> so when I first started in the business, they allowed at the company I was at, they allowed non-accredited investors. A non-accredited investor doesn't have the bandwidth to build a portfolio. You need to be in multiple wells. So a guy makes, you know, 150,000 a year, net worth $600,000. He buys 25,000 into a well. It hits. We're going to drill the second and third well, which is going to help him build his portfolio. I can't afford it. I can't afford it. So that non-accredited investor without the capital and the bandwidth he de-risks the lease, he de-risks the expiration, somebody else gets the benefits. So 
it was basically a decision that from the sponsor's perspective, that in today's world, you probably have to have a net worth of a million dollars or higher to truly secure the benefit. And that way you can have the advantage of being able to build a portfolio. And then the other part of it is I dealt with non-accredited investors back in 1985 to like 1988 before I went to all accredited. So no offense to anybody. Some of the biggest crybabies and whiners were those that were non-accredited because the money was so important. A guy making a million dollars a year, loses 25 grand. He's not happy, but it's not going to take food off his table. You got a net worth of five or 600,000, you lose 25,000. You start going, well, that was 6.2% of my portfolio or my net worth. It gets real personal. It gets real deep and you can really find yourself upside down. And I see a lot of accredited investors got hold of some smooth talking oil guys and lose half their net worth and wipe them out. I just don't think it's the appropriate asset class. Okay, good. Love the quick talk. Tell us about audited returns your company has provided. We don't provide audited returns. Why would we? It's your, it's your well. You own it. It's a direct flow through. You get a paper trail all the way back to every barrel of oil sold. You're not buying my company. You're buying an asset. So it'd be like asking the guy that sells you an apartment complex, can you show me your audited returns? You don't ask for audited returns. You're owning a piece of a well drilled by a major well company. It shows the money invested. It shows the paper trail down to the penny what's being spent. Anytime you feel like you're not getting the correct information, you say, Troy, I'd like to come see the, I'd like to come talk to you about your books. Come on in. Uh, we'll set up a time. You come in, bring your CPA, and you sit down and say, okay, can you show me when my $100,000 got in and what happened? Yep, when the discount stayed here, when the paperwork cleared, we sent it off. Exxon has your money. Exxon sends us a, a statement every month. We process it down to your interest. Here's your statement. Here's every barrel of oil, every load of crude oil of gas, every molecule of gas has been sold. And so here's what your results are. When somebody asks me, no offense again, Don, when somebody asks me about audited financials, you automatically tell me you're not qualified to invest in work and interest because you're already suspicious and you're, you're trying to relate it to like buying into a startup or a company. You're buying a piece of real estate. It just happens to be a functional piece of real estate being drilled by a major oil company or Eckerd Energy. And that is easily to trail, but nobody's going to spend the money to audit your money on a well. Never going to happen. <laughs> okay. How are monthly distributions being taxed? Is normal income or is dividend income? No, no, it'd be ordinary income. Uh, you're going to have a self-employment tax on it. And so basically you're going to get that 15% uh, depletion allowance, which is going to give you 15% of your income tax-free. That normally offsets the uh, active income aspect in that, in that um, self-employment tax. So you get that 15% reduction, but it is active income. And that's another good thing. It is active because I can then redeploy it next year and get the same tax benefits. When you own mineral rights, it's passive. So you got to find passive loss against passive income. With oil and gas expiration, though, it's active. And so therefore, you have to treat it accordingly. So tonight, we were really only talking working interest. We yeah. weren't talking minerals. There are some things that are really well done inside of an IRA. Working interest wouldn't be one of those things because it's active income. Will you explain well, that a little bit? Yeah. So inside your self-directed IRA, the whole goal is not to lose money. The goal is, is to put it in investments that make you money, frequent cash flow is really desired, and you want to build, let's say you had 100000 in your self-directed IRA. I don't want any expenses. I don't want any bills. I don't want any risk. I don't want to lose any money. I want to take that $100,000 and make as high a return as I can per year, let that money compound, and when I decide to pull it out 10, 20, 30 years down the road, I have this much bigger pile, hopefully as big as it can be, and I'm going to pull it out in my tax rate when I withdraw it, right? When you have work and interest, the idea is I'm actively participating because I'm trying to use ordinary income, not retirement income, to get that immediate tax write-off. But I could have a bad well. I could have a, a well that goes depleted. So you think about it. A well is a straw in a shake. Only that one straw gets oil and gas. When that one straw runs out, it has no value. I don't want to get 15 years out and find out my IRA. I've taken all that cash. I've redeployed it. But that one asset has no more value. With mineral rights, I own the entire shake. And I want somebody else to go put 12 straws in it. And I get my share of all 12 of those straws of extraction. So it's a perfect investment to own minerals inside of a self-directed IRA. I have no risk, no liability, no exposure, no cost, no holding cost. It compounds every month. And I can just keep doing that. In addition, if you try to convert that from a traditional IRA to a Roth, there's outside third-party appraisers who will take a look at what you acquired. They'll use the SEC and IRS standards of appraisal and what we've seen is about a 40 to 50% reduction 
in the value of those minerals according to those two SEC and IRS kind of a, a parameters. And so I take 500,000, I buy minerals. Six months later, I send it to a third party appraiser. They follow the code. They come back and say, we think under the IRS or SEC code, it's worth 250,000. I then transfer that from a self, from a traditional IRA into a Roth. I only pay taxes on 250,000, not 500,000. Our clients have done a tremendous job in tax management by using a self-directed IRA for mineral investing to move money out of that traditional into a Roth. But work and interest, you don't want that in your IRA. You want to have only IRA that's going to not lose money. That's the key. That would be an IRA would be a great opportunity to invest in mineral rights or something else. 100%. But probably not working interest. No, not at all. And Don, we probably have 65% of our capital that we've raised for um, mineral rights has been through self-directed IRAs. About $500 million has come through self-directed IRAs into uh, minerals as a result of what I just described. Cool. All right. Troy, um, early on, you were talking 1987 when Congress adopted the law, and you said we, might, you know, there was fear that we'd be running out of oil. Um, are we going to run out of oil? And if so, when? Yeah, I can't even remember the author that kept talking about peak oil. And the concept was, at some point, we're going to have tapped into the geological reserves that we know exist, and we're going to have this bell curve that we no longer have as much as we, we, we think we do, right? But the truth of the matter is, I think that oil and gas is a lot like cancer. If you paid these doctors enough money, they could probably solve cancer versus all the costs for oncology. Well, the oil and gas industry is the same way. If you pay us $9 a barrel, we can't afford to drill a horizontal well. We can't frack it. You pay us $70 a barrel, we can go two miles horizontally and we can frack it with 28 million pounds of sand. And now we're the number one oil producer. So I don't think we're running out of oil and gas. In fact, there are so many reserves in this country, but a lot of those reserves are not economically viable below $100 a barrel. They're not economically viable until you get to $150 a barrel. So if you take a static point in time today and you said, how much reserves can we produce today at $70 oil and 350 natural gas? It's a finite amount. But with technology, improvement, efficiencies, artificial intelligence, and commodity prices, all of a sudden you go from, hey, we've got 30 billion barrels of oil in the United States. All of a sudden you have a couple of AI improvements in technology. You have commodity prices go up and go, but now we have 70 billion. They go, where did we get the extra 10 billion? Well, it was there all the time. In the, in the basins, Don, that you're invested in, that I'm invested in, we're running about 9% of the reserves in place. Are we, we're recovering today at today's cost and technology. At least, you know, 91% in the ground that we're going to own and get to continue to produce for the next 50 to 100 years. So it's really cool that we're on the forefront of what's being extracted in the forefront of the technology because it's so robust and so much saturation and gas in place, we haven't even scratched the surface of what the U.S. has. Cool. All right. Can we see historical payouts of the wells you drilled? I think you showed that on one of your slides. Yeah, I did. I can, um, if you want, I can send, um, I don't know if I had the share right again. I can send, I think it's over here. I can send you the PowerPoint. You can send it out to all your, um, your people if you want. <laughs> we can do that, or you can watch this on YouTube tomorrow. Yeah. Um, we will, we'll, we'll record this. It, yeah. it is being recorded, but it usually takes us, oh, 24 hours to get it posted. We'll also send out the link to it to any, anyone who registered for tonight's webinar. So you're here, you'll get an email from us. Watch for that, and you'll see, and you can blow it up however big you want to do it. Okay. One thing to keep in mind on our performance record is these are big, big oil companies, and for them, four and five months, taking to complete a well is nothing, right? Sorry about that. So I want to point out, like, for example, in a total return, you walk down here, the, the Borden Fraser wells are 235% return, 313% return. Each one of these individual wells in this, this is an antelope project with like four or five wells. They range from 105%, 51%, 68%. But see, as an investor, I don't care if one well does 52. I just care that all of them are productive, all of them are generating income. And if one well out of five makes 200% return and covers the other four. I like multi-well projects for that reason, right? But you get down to maturity levels as you go down. I mean, we're up to like 72 or 73 projects already. 
you start going down the list, depending on the timing, the maturity, the maturation, and et cetera, you start to see the returns. You drop all the way down here to the bottom, you got the uh, 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 EEP dogfish at the bottom. Well, that son of a gun's made 114% payout, and it's only been around for like 18, 18, 19 months as far as production. We had a program last year that in nine months, the very first distribution was an 83% return, first check going out the door. Clients were actually upset saying, did this for tax write-off. You gave me the money back in the same year. I'm not going to get the write-off. I said, you're, you're, you're mad because I sent you 83% return of your money? But it's, it's tax blaming, right? So I think the key is for investors is you have to have a practical appreciation of what you're doing. You are a ant on the beach, and we are participating with major oil companies. And they're drilling these wells with the most proficient tools, the most proficient and skilled individuals they have. And I, I'm, I've been doing this so long, I'm very calm. I know every decision on that well is being made for the best interest of the general account because they're having to pay their share. Now, my company, Eckerd Energy, we drill our own wells as well. So we're going to end up with 25 to 50 percent. So every decision, every dollar, the lock on the gate, the catwalk, the tank, the category, we always look at safety. We're not looking at cutting corners. We're looking at best in class. And the, the investors, the passive investors, the people looking at this particular uh, show and podcast or, or, or session, they are going to get the benefit of all that expertise without having to pay a dime. That's not how it was 15 years ago. 15 years ago, you would have to pony up your share of all the leases, all the costs, all the geology called a G and G fee. You might start off the gate by putting up $10 million just to play poker. We don't have to do that anymore. Now we can just take a piece and drill the well. It is so much more in favor of the individual investor today than it's ever been. I'm having the time of my life making my clients a ton of money. And I got zero pressure. I never have to go, hey, Don, that was a dry hole. So sorry I lost your money. It's it's not that. It's like, Don, I'm sorry. I've only got you 62% this year. We'll work harder next year. That's that's the fun part of my job. Cool. Okay, Ryan is asking two questions. One, about liability for the investor. And is there ever going to be a time when they ask, go back to the partners and do a capital call going, oh, we need a little bit more money? The answer is uh, yes, yes, yes. So when they passed the 1986 Tax Reform Act, the only condition they had is, you had to be an active participant. You couldn't invest through a limited partnership. You couldn't invest in an LLC. They want you to be actively involved. Now, your tax planner is going to have a variable opinion on all this. So my tax experts, and I've been doing this for 40 years, said form a single member LLC, which I did, invest through that. And I've been audited by the IRS. I mean, they could tell you every, every hair of my head, they audited me so bad for five years, right? But at the end, not a single comment about my single member LLC investing in hundreds of wells. So what I do is I isolate my working interest in that single member LLC. And that allows me to protect myself from the liability, but I'm also following the IRS guidelines of being at risk. And then, of course, the liability is real only because you can have accidents occur. But in my 40-year career, I've never had a single well or a single claim against my company, myself, or any of my investors ever. And I've had rigs on fire. I've had guys killed on rigs. It just goes through the insurance. The insurance is so massive, it never passes through. Now, the idea is, historically, what you want to do is manage that risk by, in my case, forming a single-member LLC. And then there are cash calls, because here's what happens. When the, the operator, the company that's going to go out, and think about a general contract in real estate, when they go put the bid together, some of those bid items are fixed. Hey, Mr. Drilling Contractor, the guy I'm going to pay to use his rig, how much are you going to charge? That's $27,000 a day, it includes staff, fuel, blah, blah, blah. Okay, thank you. Hey, Mr. Tank Guy, how much are my tanks going to be? Well, if you buy them in the next 90 days, it's this price, but if you don't, it's subject to market change. So what most operators do, they lock in as many things as they can get, many prices, the equipment, and that kind of stuff. But the variables are going to be Mother Nature. So you could go down and drill a well, kick off horizontally. Your full intention is to drill out two miles or 8,500 feet or 9,000 feet. You hit a small fall, the drill bit cone pops off. You got to back up and trip out of the hole. Maybe you spend an extra two or $300,000. And I can see every one of the uh, viewers on this podcast with you and me going, oh my God, am I going to have to pay 200000 No, no, no. See, we don't take big chunks. You might own one-tenth of 1%. These are $10 million wells. You might own your share of 200000 Your cash call might be $200. Hypothetically, the way Ecker does, and I only say hypothetically because I don't know the exact percentage, when Ecker puts together our budget, we probably put in about a 5 to 10% contingency, and most of the time we do multiple well projects. So 
if one one has a problem, the other four contingency will cover that. Out of the 72 projects we've had, I think we've had like seven wells that have had cost overruns. Four of them were all by Marathon for this reason. Marathon provided the budget. They got started proposing the wells. Then all of a sudden, Russia started the war. Everybody went to go drill like crazy to catch $129 oil. Those service guys with all that equipment said, oh, yeah, everybody wants me. I'm the prettiest girl at the dance today, so I'm going to charge you twice the price. So Marathon's budget went over by 25%. And we had to cash call our partners and they all paid their 15 or 20% cost, cost overrun. Those wells still paid out in like nine months, even with the cost overrun. So we, we factor in which costs are fixed, which ones are variable. We factor in our total AFE or budget. And then we factor in a small contingency. I don't want to put too much of a contingency. I don't want to sit on your money. If we come under budget, we send you a check back. So if we drill five wells for $50 million and they come in at 40 million, you get your share of 10 million. Takes about 14 months to run all the bills through. We have that pile of money left. We go, hey, Ryan, here's your check back. Hey, Ryan, we had one well out of four. The other four contingency was used up. That well is over 200000 Ryan, you owe us $200. Ryan says, I'm not paying you the $200. That's okay. We control your revenue off the other four wells. You're going to pay us. <laughs> <I'm> just... <laughs> I mean, the, the reality Bye. is, the reality is we know the risk, but I'm just telling you, the risks are extremely small. Cash calls, maybe 15% of the time or less. For the most part, we stay on budget or below budget. Cool. Good question. Okay. Which drilling companies are you working with? Um, whoever's available that we like their iron and we like their crews. So the current contract we just signed is with Cactus Drilling. They're moving on location in about five weeks. Uh, the reason we like it, they have very good iron. Their equipment's up to date. They got some of the latest, greatest technology on it. We know the crew that's on there sticks together. Most drilling contractors rotate their crew. You know, they, they don't all work on the same crew at the time. What you want is you want consistency. So our drilling superintendent, our VP of, of exploration has worked with his crew before. And they said, we want that rig, that crew. We're moving it from Louisiana to Oklahoma. We're going to contract that rig and we'll probably use that rig for the next five years drilling straight on. These bigger oil companies, the same thing. They're looking for not the cheapest drilling contractor. They're looking for the one that has the best iron, the best computer technology inside of that doghouse and looking for the rigs that have the most modern capacity and capability. And that's why we're, we're seeing so much more improvement in the drilling. The crews move with the rig. The rig continues to have parts. Something that most of your viewers probably don't know, the last 200 rigs they've been laying down and, and there's been decreasing drilling rates. They've been cannibalizing those older antiquated rigs and using parts to feed the remaining 550 rigs. There's no more rigs. If we see a big drill baby drill from President Trump, we don't have any rigs to drill baby drill. So prices for rigs are going to go up because there's going to be a lot more demand for them. So if you don't have a long-term contract, which is what we signed, you're going to be paying a lot more than $27,000 a day for that rig in about six months. We have no more rigs. Joe's asking, can we, can this be used to save on passive short-term capital gains tax? Mm, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I think you need active income. So I think the idea for this is you got to look at your overall portfolio. You know, I got a basket of passive income. I got a basket of passive losses. I got, you know, W2 income. I got investment income. What your accountant should do is look at all your baskets, measure against each other and say, based on A, B, C, I don't think you need the tax write-off. Or based on what you have, let's take some income over here, put more of your income into drilling, use this other passive income from your investments to do this. And the key is I'm not a tax expert, but I can tell you I got some pretty complex clients, very wealthy, you know, two million to two billion. And what they do is they just say, accountant, professional, here's all my income from everything I own. Here's all I have as far as, you know, whatever I invest for deductions. And they're going to say, you need a million dollars in tax write-off. You better go call Troy and put your money in. We had a $50 million mm -hmm. drilling program out about eight weeks ago. It funded in about seven days. And we have clients screaming, we need another $20 or $30 million in drilling in the month of December. If we can find it, we'll deliver it. But I can tell you right now, in my opinion, the number one asset clients are going to want to be involved in for tax deductions is going to be working interest. Um, I understand the cost seg in real estate. I understand all the depreciation, all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, what you want is you don't want to figure out how to lose money. You want to make money. And if you can take those taxes with it, it's a home run. And I think that's going to be the exciting part is everybody's going to be driven to work in interest. And that work in interest is going to deliver those financial returns. And that's really going to be exciting to see how that, that builds a lot of portfolios very quickly. Okay. Keith is asking, do mineral rights owners get all the tax benefits? Do they mineral get any owner, tax benefits? You get none. The only way you get a write-off is you got to have something at risk. Mineral owners are like big fat guys sitting in the back of the uh, limo 
point direction. There's like, hey, it's my limo. You drive. I send me my check. I mean, Troy's a man. I sit in the back of the limo, my big old chubby belly, and I'm just like, send me a check. I don't get bills. I don't get expenses. I have no holding costs. I have no property tax. I just get revenue. So the idea for minerals, the only tax benefit you get for mineral ownership is you only have to pay taxes on 85% of that royalty income. So think about it like, uh, like Vegas, right? The mineral owner is the house. They own the casino. And they've allowed the casino manager to go in there and run the floor. And they're paying the cost, paying the bills, and you know, taking a chance with the gamblers, right? The working interest owner is the ones that are drilling those wells. They own interest in those individual straws put in the ground. The mineral owner, I want them to drill my property like a pin cushion. I don't care if well number one is a dry hole and well number 20 makes all the oil and gas and the other 19 wells are horrible. I get my share of every drop of oil and every molecule of gas. Now, I want my tenant, the oil company, to drill great wells. That means you're going to produce a lot of oil and gas for myself, but I take no risk because I don't care which well it comes from as a mineral owner. I get it all. As a working interest owner, I'm putting my money in individual wells, and those wells and what they produce are going to be my relative return on investment, and that's why working interest is more difficult than, than minerals, but that's also why you get a big tax write-off. Okay, so if somebody wanted to talk to you or talk to somebody on your team about this, Go back to your last closing slide. Yeah. And and, and and let's... I think I avoided that one too, but I think I messed up. Aria's going to get me in trouble. She's going to be like, you didn't follow instructions. I said, I know I didn't. All right, let's go through it. Right. So yes. how do they get involved if they're interested? Well, the main thing is, and I was going to tell everybody, look, the main thing is very simple. All right? Go. Um, gosh, dog, did I do that wrong? Nope. Okay, let me get through it. I told you I'm not that good when I get off here. Why is it not giving me the last screen from the current slide? There you go. That's there it. You. Okay, got it. Yeah, Don, so the way they get hold of me, and I want to be very candid with everybody as I normally am. Look, there is no pressure from any of my staff to talk to them. You can talk to them, ask them any question you want. You can ask them about auditing my company. They'll probably give you the same answer. But the idea is if you take this, this uh, QR code, it's going to take you to the site that's going to give you information. We probably have thousands of hours of training video and transparency and how things work. You're probably going to get sick of hearing my voice and all the information we give you. But here's the thing. Mo out of probably 20 million millionaires in the United States, maybe 500,000 are emotionally and financially qualified to be in working interest. Why? <laughs> because it takes somebody that has the courage. It takes somebody to say, you know, I'm owning an asset. It's a piece of real estate. You know, the probability is based on Troy's tracker, and I'm going to do really, really well. But you always have to assume the risk. You always have to know you're at risk, and you have, to you have to have the income to support it because otherwise you're taking risk for no reason, right? So go to the site. We built a very intricate app. It's the only app like this in, in natural resources. It's called Eckerd Insights. Once you invest, you can literally look at every one of your wells, all your minerals, every deed, and you can do it 24 hours a day. We made it mainstream. We are adding the work and interest side. We haven't focused on that, so it's a little bit premature in the work and interest, but you get access to everything, your deeds, your contracts, your titles, everything. So we, we've taken a very obscure asset class, and we're the only one in the, in the country that has this or does this. The only one, period. Nobody can touch us. And we did this for one reason. I don't trust anybody. I don't even like the newspaper kids selling me a $25 newspaper route anymore, right? Because why? He's probably taking the money. I'll never get my paper. So I take the assumption you work really hard for your money. You want to find somebody who's an expert. You want access to data. There's no website that says how to invest in oil and gas 101 and do it. It doesn't exist. It does in real estate, but not in oil and gas. It's an obscure asset class, which is why most people avoid it. But if you're not scared... Call the 800 number, get online and sign up to the app. One of our salaried wealth managers, no commission, no, no transaction bonuses, benefits, zero. And just say, I'm brand new. I saw you guys on the show the other day. I've been on Protect Well, saw you, Troy and Don talking. Tell me what a $500,000 income guy can do to save some taxes by being in your working interest, what I expect, what my risk is. And they're going to tell you like it is. In fact, Don, I train the guys to run clients off. And you go, huh? Not rudely, we try to run them off because we care about you making the right investment for you. It's your portfolio, it's your money, it's your decision, and it's not for everybody. But I will tell you, if it is for you, this is going to be one of your, your most efficient tax tools that you can have in your portfolio. I've lived it for 40 years. I can't even tell you how much taxes I save. I can't even tell you how many wells I have. And, and what it takes is it takes, it's not a gamble. You're not risking money. You're building another block in your foundation 
one drilling venture after another. And after a while, you have this really long portfolio, real estate, bonds, stocks, et cetera. And you'll have that energy block and you go, I didn't know it. And after four years, I own, I own 75 or 100 wells and they're all kicking out cash every month. And wow, glad I listened to that guy back in 2024. I mean, that's that's how fast things can build for you very quickly. Well, Troy, I absolutely agree with you. Um, when when I started getting involved, your guys <clears throat> were not salesy. If it, in, in fact, it, I, I somewhat had to talk them into, <laughs> no, <laughs> I really right. I, I really do want to buy this. <laughs> and and so I've invested a, a, a second time and a third time, and I'm getting ready for a fourth time. And, and I love your website because I can go on it any time of day in the middle of the night in my underwear if I want to and <laughs> and and see what's happening. And I love your green letter day like yesterday where yep. I get I get an email saying, here's here's the payout. It's going to hit my IRA in a, here in a, in a day or two. But you know what? It 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 just works. I, I I like that. I I like being a passive investor and letting you do all the work. I I will tell you this: working interest in minerals is a boring asset class. You can't change it. You can't control it. You can't trade it. But you got billion dollar oil companies working twenty four hours a day in the rain, the sleet, the cold, the snow. They don't care. And these wells are generating you money truthfully twenty four hours a day, seven days a week, every day of the year. So. It is probably the most true passive asset you'll ever own. I sit back and I'm bored out. Of, I'm bored to tears. I own all these minerals, all these wells. And I'm like, what am I going to do today? Well, there's nothing I can do. I mean, I got 7,800 wells producing income for our clients and for myself. And I'm like, they don't need my input. It's just what asset am I going to buy tomorrow? Because it's so passive, it can be a little boring. But, you know, I like boring making 12, 13, 30% return. I mean, our minerals are making almost 13% cash on cash. Our, our working interest is making over 30% return a year. Bore me to tears at those kind of rates of returns. I, I could care less if I, that's all I do was buy minerals and working interest if that, with those kind of rates of return. And again, to your audience, none of your questions are not respected and none of your questions are, in fact, not appreciated. You got to know, you got to ask. The only reason why I say I'm kind of sarcastic is because the truth is I've been doing this so long. I kind of know who's going to be an investor and who's just poking the bear. And some of you've been burned in bad deals. You're going to have to really trust the sponsor. So I, I would say, like I did at the beginning, your number one risk is the sponsor. And there's a lot of bad characters in oil and gas. There's a lot of bad intentions in oil and gas because they know you're going to hear that word tax deduction like a dinner bell to sharks and you're going to come a running and your common sense will be out the left door. Protect yourself. Ask for proof of concept, ask for track record, ask for resumes, find out what the guy's been doing. And I'm going to tell you, if you can't look on the internet these days on Google and find out what that person's been doing the last 5, 10, 20 years, there's a reason why that, that trail goes cold after three or four years, because that's the part they don't want you to know about. Um, hit just a couple more questions for us, sure. if you would. No problem. Um, the success rate of oil and gas, when, when I started hearing about it years ago, um, dry well, dry well, dry well. It's not that way. Why? Is it technology? Is it fracking? Is it combination? It's, it's, we knew that these shell zones were there all along. So basically, these shell basins are like modern day Grand Canyon. These basins were, were, were evolved through erosion and through the oceanic movement. And they deposited just massive amounts of shale that compacted this organic dead material, which makes up oil and gas. So we knew it. My brother used to drill vertical wells back in the 1990s. He said, you know, we drilled down about 6,000 feet. We hit this shale. It's so hard. It's like concrete. It, it, we take a, a core sample. It's loaded with fossil fuel, but it's like wet concrete. You can't get it to flow. And he used to cuss and scream about drilling through shale. What a piece of junk it is. It tears up the bits. It's a pain in the neck. Had no idea that was the mother load. And so where you avoid the dry holes is, instead of trying to hang a bob and get a geologist and a drilling company to go down and find a seven and a half inch target out of 300 acres and hope you hit it like a, a buried river channel. Now you say, well, this is a Grand Canyon. It's 40 million acres loaded with oil and gas. The oil zone's down at 7,000 feet. You got to hit a 200 foot, 20 story building thickness. You want to be in the upper 50 feet and you want to drill it out 4,200 feet, 8,000 feet in horizontal direction. It's no longer about, is there oil and gas? Now it's get the drill bit in the sweet spot in that 200 foot zone, which is easy because we use triangulation and satellites. We have chips behind the drill bit guidance within 12 inches of accuracy. 
So now it's not really the drilling, it's the fracking. It's the what we've done to improve cracking the rock by using sand and high pressure water and sand injection, shattering the rock, allowing that only gas molecules to escape. They're under about 3,000 pounds per square inch of pressure. When you drill the hole, it's trying to get to the surface at zero pressure. So it's like shaking up that three liter coke. We drill it, we frack it, we over inject it, and those molecules want out. And what we've done is we spent most of our time and money the last 10 years perfecting the completion and the fracking of the wells. So wells seven years ago that would do 300 barrels a day, they were great wells. Today, that would be a junk well. Today, we're looking at a thousand. We just put three new wells online last week. We got the production report. The three wells combined, brand new, are making somewhere in the neighborhood of 4,500 barrels a day at about 10 million in gas. Those wells will pay out in about seven months or less. And they're one of our mineral packages. So... 300 barrels, I was happy with that seven years ago. Today, 300 barrels would be a junk well. That's what the technology, that's what computers and software and satellite and triangulation is doing. That's what technology's done for us. Uh, Don, the reason I switched to minerals was in 2016 and 17. I went back to geologists and geophysicists I'd known for 25 years. Really, really good guys, very successful. I said, look, you guys are you guys are the most experienced guys I know in Houston. Show me your very best drilling prospect because I was going to make a commitment to go back and drill a bunch of vertical wells using 3D seismic. 17 out of 19 wells were either dry or uneconomical. 17 out of 19. Cost me several million dollars and my partners a lot of money. I said, I will never drill a vertical well again. I'm not going to go into a hospital and they want to run an x-ray when I have a tumor. I want an MRI. I want three-dimensional. I want the best technology. Horizontal drilling takes you to the, everything Elon Musk is doing, the oil company's using. Everything NASA's doing, the oil company's using that data. We're guiding that drill bit just like they're guiding that spacecraft to Mars. So we're probably the number one consumer of oil and gas is the industry of software and hardware because we want the very best tools to avoid cost and to be accurate. We're going we're gonna to crush it. Under President Trump, we're going to drill baby drill. Oil prices will probably stay sub $85 a barrel. But we don't need high oil prices. What we need is we need a lot more wells drilled. The more wells we drill, the more production we have, the more income we make as investors. So I, I'm not worried about high price of oil. What I want is I want the economy to stay stable. I want consumers to be able to survive and live without inflation. I'm I'll take 70 to $75 barrel oil, and I'll take three to 350 natural gas, and we make a mountain of cash successfully while we're taking tax deductions. It's not a hard game plan. You just got to find the right sponsor. Okay, we got nine open questions. Can we get through these in about five minutes? I'll make each one less than 45 seconds. Go. There we go. Okay, if I invested today, could I get the entire deduction this year, or do I need to wait until all the money is put to work? No, once you write the check and you participate in the purchase sale agreement, we've already committed to that, that well we offer you. As long as we start activation on the well before March the 15th of next year, that 100% investment will be applicable to the tax deductions that are available from that investment this year. Okay. What's the average monthly payout? You mentioned that a couple of minutes ago, but go over that one more time. There is no average. We have a financial model that says every well we participate in, we target 36 distribution or 36 productive months or less. We're crushing that because we want to be realistic. We're going to, we're going to underestimate and over deliver. So if you were an investor, I'm going to write a check today, November the 26th. I'm going to see my first check probably November, December next year. And then I want 24 to 36 months of distribution to get 100% of my money back, not counting tax write-offs. So you can calculate probably your first year, you might see 40 to 60% back. The well declines. The second year, I might get 25 to 35% back. And then I'm paid out by the third year or faster. So that's the way it works. Big checks in the first 12 to 14 months. The well declines. I get the rest of my money in year two and three. I'm paid out and that well is going to last for 25 years. So at that point, it's exponential returns and I could care less because I'm going to redeploy the capital. That was 42 seconds. Go. Okay. <laughs> you day is saying we, we're looking for the income, not the tax write-off. Well, you're looking for both, but but mainly the tax, or you're, you're mainly looking for the income. That's why we're investors. Yes. Yeah, the, the problem is, is that I think the financial industry has has ripped off investors for 30 years since I've been in the business. You look at every investment out there right now, the first thing they tell you is tax write-off, tax write-off, tax write-off. What is a tax write-off? I've lost money. That's why I get a write-off. So the idea is, if you're going to get a write-off, focus on the 63% 
that you would have kept had you just paid your taxes. Every year I pay a lot of money in taxes, a lot, even though I have drilling, right? Because if I don't find a well or wells, they're going to make me my money back, my full million dollars. I don't want to invest. I'm not just going to invest to save the 370000 and I lose my 63% of my 630000 But the financial industry has talked us into the craziest investments in ostrich farms and grass farms and this and cost segregation and crappy wells because we hear tax fraud and we, we think it's a mortal sin to pay our taxes. It's not. If I made $10 million and I gave the government $3.7 million, I got to keep $6.3 million after tax because I couldn't find anything to invest in, I'm way okay. I don't want to put the 10 million and lose the 10 million. Hell, I'm, I'm 10 five times further behind. You invest in any investment. Number one should be making money. Number two should be if I'm going to make money and I choose which asset, what tax benefits do I get as kind of a complimentary side dish to making the money? I've represented millionaires for 40 years, Don. The most successful clients I have really don't give a damn about tax write-offs. They don't. And I'm like, you got tax write offs I don't care. I want to make money. If it comes to tax, tax write-offs, great. And it's just the attitude they have, which is totally opposite than 98% of most investors. Most investors are like, tax write-off, I'll do it. Boom. You just lost all your money. God, that sucks. What happened? Well, it had no, it had no reality. There was no uh, validation that the asset was any good, but you got that write-off you were looking for. Too bad you lost 63% of your money. Okay. How many years income will earn? How liquid is the investment? And when can you pull out of the investment and how? What's what's an exit strategy for this? That was three and one, so I'm going to take 45 it seconds. It was. Um, there is no liquidity. You own an asset. You can sell it. And typically being when you want to sell it, you don't want to sell it until three years of ownership because the IRS has a recapture rule that says if you try to sell and you've taken it right off in oil and gas, working interest, you have to have a recapture of any deductions you've taken up until the third year. After the third year, you can sell it. You could do a 1031 exchange because it's real estate. Typically, in my career, the working interest you own, if you decided to sell after three years, you're going to say, okay, I made my money back. I got my tax write off. I don't want to own it anymore. Um, we do not have an online market for working interest, but we do for minerals. What would typically happen is our engineering department would run your income, your interest on that wealth through the financial engineering model. And we would say, your $100,000 you invested, you made your money back, got your taxes. Today, that well is generating $30,000 a year in income. We'll take a decline curve, commodity price, plug in abandonment cost, operating cost. Say, we'll offer you $22,000 today, and it's a net present value NPV of 12%. And you go, that's all I'm going to get? Well, we got to produce it 20 years to get our money. We got to plug the well. We got operation rework. Well, I don't want that price. Then keep it. What do I do with it now? Tell us you want to sell it, and we'll put it out to the other 2,700 clients we have, and somebody's going to buy it. I've yet to see any client not sell back into the additional or the existing Eckerd client base because we have 2,700 smart, wealthy clients. We all want income, but you're going to get even beaten up worse in the public market because you're going to have professional engineers work you down and yeah. squeeze you. They might offer you $12,000, but we may pay you $22,000 for it. So that's the liquidity standpoint. As far as cash flow, these wells are calculated the last 20 to 50 years, and that's a check every single month. But at the end, they don't get their original, their initial investment back plus returns. Sure, they do. They're getting. Sure, they do. What's that? I, mean, I put in a hundred thousand. I, I put in a hundred thousand in a project. It pays me out in the next twenty four months. So my money's back, right? So it's like buying a rent house. I bought a rent house for hundred grand. I charged a really high rent. And I got all my money back in thirty six months. So now I own the house free and clear, and the tenant's going to keep paying me rent. I got exponential return, right? So what you're getting back is income because it's not a return of principal. I mean, I'm getting income on my asset, which is the interest in the well. That's the real estate. But once I recover my investment, I got no more exposure. The question then becomes, well, what's the residual value? Well, you're draining a swimming pool. Every day, you're taking oil and gas from that well out of the ground that's never going to be there again. You're depleting it. That's why you get a depletion allowance. But you may say, well, how do I know it's going to be worth more or less? Well, here's the deal. I got. We just bought a package of, I don't know, 200 producing wells. We calculate, we ran it out, and these wells have been in line five, six, seven years. We paid like uh, $30 million for them. Why? The reserves have barely been extracted. The value today is higher than it was seven years ago, and we still have a lot of running room with them. So all I can tell you is this is not like buying a house, right? You're buying a well. You're <laughs> getting a depletion allowance. You're producing a finite amount that can be pulled from that one given well. The idea is to get your money back in 36 distribution months, redeploy the capital, 
But now you have crude producing reserves in the ground. That might be another two or 300,000 barrels of oil produced over the next 30 years. I've got wells I own today. I make more money today at $70 oil when they were drilled 15 years ago at like $30 a barrel. But I make more money today because they've improved the technology. They reworked the well and I got higher commodity prices. So I can't give you a finite answer, but you can't suck all your, 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 your shake with one straw and expect to own the whole shake. It doesn't work that way. Cool. All right, that was 47 seconds, but I'm sorry, I right. went seconds over. <laughs> What's the minimum amount to invest? $2.5 million per client. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm in that Thanksgiving mood, Don. No, uh, in working interest, it's at least $25,000 investment. We, what we really want you to think about doing three or four working interest programs so we can diversify you and give you three or four bricks to start that portfolio. Minerals is $25,000 to $50,000 per portfolio. But again, and just being very candid, we don't have the bandwidth to manage 7,000 people. We're really, really looking for investors that are saying, I want to be in energy. I've done my homework on Eckerd. I like you as a sponsor. We're wanting you to kind of look in that $250,000 range for minerals, you know, four, five, six portfolios at twenty five dollars to 50000 to give us a, a really good block of foundation for you. Work and interest, you really need the income. And when I see somebody putting in 25000 that tells me you probably don't have the income. So you really ought to be thinking to yourself, you know, if I make a half million this year, maybe I should put 150,000. Troy, how do you think we should deploy it? Well, I do 50,000 in three portfolios, give you multiple wells, different maturity, and those things come online. You can redeploy the capital. So minimums are 25 to 50, but we really want you to think about multiple portfolios because we just don't have the bandwidth to hold one person who throws 25,000 in because they're going to want the same treatment as a guy who puts in, you know, a million dollars in 25 projects. And it's not being disrespectful. I just don't have the team. We're at 58 people. And we want to give you very personal attention. We want to kick butt, make you a lot of money. One thing, Don, I've told people for years, Troy's not a dummy. I have one goal, make all my investors a ton of return and cash flow in their investment. You don't have to have the best website. You don't have to have the fanciest swag. Just perform. Make people money day in and day out. Be transparent. You'll have investors for life. Now, with that being said, I also want partners. I don't want investors. I don't want somebody who says, well, I gave you 25 grand and see how you do it. Keep your 25 grand. Well, I'll try you one time. Not interested. I want somebody to be my partner that will learn, understand the business, understand where we're going over the next 10 years, what kind of vision we have. And I want you to be a serious partner, not a serious investor. Okay. Do you expect Trump's election to be wind at our back? <laughs> hey, baby. About a thousand miles per hour. Once yeah. he put once he puts sanctions on Iran, once he gets Vladimir Putin put back in his cage, when he takes away the subsidies for all the wind and solar, um, we're going to see a significant demand increase because of his infrastructure plays, bringing all the manufacturing back home. Inflation is going to kick in. He's got tariffs going against China, Canada, Mexico. Not one thing he said is anything except a thousand miles an hour wind behind our back. Here's the only problem. We don't have the equipment. So that drill baby drill worked in 2017. Drill baby drill is kind of a false threat. We don't have the equipment or the crews. So unless oil stays at 72 to $80 a barrel, these oil companies, these Exxons of the world, they're just going to stay right where they're at. They're going to drill off the cash flow, stay right where they're at. You can even lend us money. We don't have the equipment. We don't have the manpower. And we don't have the incentive. I think break-even, Don, has moved from about 40 40 to $42 a barrel break-even. I bet we're closer to $55 to $60 a barrel break-even. Nobody drills just to break even. You drill to make money. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we're in a great position. We're in a great position that we have access to these tremendous tier one assets. We're in a great position that high net worth investors can use Eckerd as a, as a way to get in, the entry point to get in. But more importantly, is we got a president who's pro-business, pro-tax write-off, pro-fossil fuel, pro-America. And all that means one thing, a heck of a lot more demand for oil and gas the next four years. That's great news for us. <laughs> It's a perfect time to be investing. Yes, All sir. right, James, good questions. What's the lowest oil price that your cost structure will support um, and still remain profitable? Well, James, I'm going to give you an answer. Um, we, we don't look at it that way. Here's what we look at. What does it take over a 12, 24 month to be profitable? Why? We sold oil in um, April of 2020 when COVID took place. And I think I got $6 a barrel for some of my oil. We sold oil for $35, $37 a barrel, which was technically below break even. But about 18 months later, we sold oil for $129 a barrel when Russia started the war with Ukraine. So 
What you do is you always moderate economic viability based on operating costs, day-to-day, -day, the pumper, the gauger, the electricity, the road, the maintenance, the insurance, against your production output. <clears throat> and production output's measured by commodity price, right? So we look at it and say, anything really, in my view, sub $42 to $45 a barrel, most likely by the time we pay cost and insurance and manpower and pay the mineral owner their share, we're probably just breaking even around $40, $42 a barrel. Now, in 2020, when COVID hit, I had hundreds of wells I personally owned. I was writing a check every month for like six months. Why? There wasn't enough production and the price of oil and gas was being sold to make a profit. So I was paying for costs, kind of like having an empty apartment complex for six months. I had to pay the insurance and the gardener, right? But on the back side of that, when oil price began to move up and it went up to that 129, I made way, way more money the next year. Unfortunately, a lot of my partners being inexperienced and impatient, they jumped. Hey, I don't want any, I don't want anymore. I'm, I'm out. I'm not paying my bills. All right, I'll buy you out. I'll buy you out. I bought them all out, the ones who wanted to sell, and I made absolute crushed money the last four years on those assets. So as an investor, think of it this way. 12 months, 25 years, that's how many months of revenue you're going to get. You're going to have some really, really great months, and you're going to have some months where you're on, man, it's kind of break even. But it's, it's just like the stock market. You're either in or out. If you were out of the top 10 high points of the stock market, you probably lost money. If you were in only the 10, you probably made a 1,000% return. You're going to own an asset that's going to generate an income for 25 to 50 years. You're going to be really, really happy some months and some months you go, that's a nice check. It's not going to buy me a new motorcycle, but I'm, I'm pretty happy to put it in the bank. The key is it's every single month we get paid by those billion dollar oil companies every single month without fail. All right. Um, last question from Joe. You mentioned that this is for accredited investors because they can build a portfolio. Does that mean investing across several wells is done in order to mitigate the investor's risk? Uh, yeah, the answer is yes, but it has a little bit of a caveat. If let's say we had 10, 10 portfolios or opportunities this year, I don't want an investor to go, I'll put a million dollars in portfolio number one. It might be the, it might be the third, right? It might be the Kentucky Derby winner. You might be lucky, right? Or maybe that's one that has marathon with cost overruns of 25%, right? So if Joe said, Troy, I got 500 grand to invest this year, I'd say, we're probably gonna have four or five projects. I suggest you put 100,000 in all five evenly. Um, and it's not because of true diversity between portfolios, but it's different operators, different timing, different wells, different geography, different pipelines, different midstream costs. There's more than just geology and geography in that diversification. It's also yeah. some to be with Exxon, some with Chevron. So I believe you have to have diversification within the well participation. But we also don't want your capital concentrated too heavily in one venture and not being uh, allocated across several ventures. I just think that's a smarter way to do it. And your people will guide the investors and the maybe look at what they're doing and, and maybe pick the help them pick the right yeah investments uh, once you tell us who you are and what you do i am an engineer i make five hundred thousand a year i got two kids one's going to college and blah 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 we're gonna say well i don't think you should put 500 grand i think you should do one hundred fifty thousand. you should spread fifty thousand over three and put the other two hundred thousand in a bond annuity or buy you some bitcoin but the one thing you'll find from us is we don't want to put you in beyond your comfort level we're all having too much fun, making too much money. We don't need to stress. So you're going to find us to be almost anti-sales. We're going to be more like what's best for Joe and his family, because at the end of the day, you're a partner. And Don, you know that from coming to our conferences. We, our partners, yeah. we're like best friends because not because we are best friends, because we do what we say we're going to do. And we put our partners first. And that's really, really rare in the alternative asset space. Students, I've been to it, their conferences. I've, I've talked to dozens and dozens of Eckerd partners, the investors. Um, I've yet to find one that wasn't happy with what they're doing. Um, I've vetted in the very best I know how. I'm, you know what? Um, it's some, it's a company that we trust. It's a company we put our, our label next to. We're, we're very happy to, to be connected with. Eckerd and I've put my own money in, into it. It's something that we believe in. So if this is something that you at least talk to them, if this is something that, that, that interests you, um, encourage you to sign up and, and I don't know, draw any closing comments. Yeah, We've I want to wish everybody, happy, in, but I I wanna wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. I want, I'm glad the election's over. Um, I'm glad it ended the way it did, but to be honest with you, I, I didn't care at that point. I just don't want to hear any more political ads. Uh, I just want to tell everybody one thing to remember. Um, we're the greatest country on the planet. 
Um, we all have blessings like never before. We have jobs and safety and neighbors, and um, it's it's fun to just see how Americans respond. Um, I'd like to put the hate behind us. Um, we're going to have to be independent with oil and gas. Um, we got a very dangerous world. We're out there right now. Russia's using bombs we haven't even seen before. The geopolitical risk to oil and gas right now is as high as I've ever seen it since the Gulf War. I mean, any one of those wars breaks over, you're talking oil's up $25 to $50 a barrel. I just want to tell you, be safe. Have a good Thanksgiving. Be careful with your money. There's a lot of crooks and thieves out there. If Acker's not right for you, we're still a resource. Call us and ask us a question. We're here to help you. See, we've been blessed. And our blessing is that we now get to do what we do, helping a lot of investors. We're not desperate. We don't have to sell anything. But we like what we're like, Don. Don and I will probably be two guys that never retire. I'll be 90 and I'll still be talking to you on the video because I just love what I do. <clears throat> and I retire, yes. But watching your face as my partners experience minerals and working interest in cash flow networks, you're like, had no idea this existed. So you might have to just uh, give a little bit of a leap of faith, fill out the app, talk to my wealth manager, take your time, become a partner, go to our field trip, go to our conferences. You're going to walk away and go, God, this is like a cult. Yeah, it's true. Once you're in the actor, you're going to get a brand on your chest that has a double E, like uh, Yellowstone. You know, you're going to have a double E on your chest. Troy, love working with you. Um, I appreciate your time tonight. Um, happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Um, God bless you and, and help us to be, be grateful for that which we have. We, we appreciate you being here tonight, Troy. I appreciate your time. Ariel, Kendall in the background, thank you for all you've done as well. Thanks, Everyone, everybody. Y'all have a safe Thanksgiving. Take care, Don. All right. Bye-bye.